Hello, my name is Shruti Rao. I'm a research program manager at the Georgetown University Innovation Center for Biomedical Informatics and also coordinate the ClinGen Somatic Cancer Clinical Domain Working Group. In this session, we will discuss the goals and structure of the ClinGen Somatic Cancer Clinical Domain Working Group and the civic data curation platform that we use for curating and interpreting somatic variants in cancer. The ClinGen Somatic Cancer Clinical Domain Working Group or CDWG, is one of the 14 clinical domain working groups within ClinGen with the goal to standardize the curation of somatic variants in cancer by collaborating with various expert groups to develop systematic processes that enable the accurate determination of the clinical significance of somatic variants for use by physicians, clinical laboratories, as well as researchers. Our ultimate goal is to enhance the, the usability, dissemination, and implementation of cancer somatic changes in the ClinGen resource, as well as other knowledge bases, including CIVIC, ClinVar, the meta-knowledge base developed by the Variant Interpretation for Cancer Consortium, as well as support genomic case discussions in virtual molecular tumor boards. The Somatic Cancer CDWG has over 100 members from 30 different organizations, including academic medical centers, laboratory diagnostic test developers, government agencies like the National Cancer Institute and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, other partner consortiums like the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, as well as professional organizations such as the American Medical Informatics Association and the Association for Molecular Pathology. The curation activities within the somatic CDWG take place within three disease task forces focused on pediatric cancer, hematologic cancers, and genitourinary cancers. The gene curation activities within each of these task forces ultimately results in the formation of somatic cancer variant curation expert panels, which follow a four-step approval process developed by ClinGen. Currently, the NTRAC Fusions Expert Panel has obtained Step 1 approval from ClinGen. Other somatic expert panels newly forming are focused on curation of somatic variants in the FLT3 gene in hematological cancers and FGFR family of genes in genital urinary cancers. The Somatic Cancer CDWG is co-led by Drs. Shashikant Kulkarni and Subha Madhavan. We also have various experts that lead the different disease task forces and informatics activities within our CDWG. Members of each Somatic Cancer Disease Task Force collectively decide on their curation goals. For example, the Pediatric Cancer Disease Task Force has shortlisted 44 highly relevant cancer genes across 23 pediatric tumor types for variant curation. Similarly, the Hematological and Genitourinary Cancer Task Forces have shortlisted candidate genes that are most commonly altered in the, in the respective disease types for curation. In order to streamline the curation and reporting of somatic variants in cancer, the Somatic Cancer CDWG developed a consensus-based framework called the Minimum Variant Level Data, or MVLD. This framework consists of three sections, allele descriptive, allele interpretive, and somatic interpretive, as you can see on the right-hand side of this figure. The allele descriptive section contains data elements that describe the genome position, the gene, chromosome, genomic location, and reference transcript and protein information. The allele interpretive section contains data elements describing the DNA and protein substitution positions, the variant type, so whether the variant is germline or somatic, and its consequence, as well as PubMed identifiers supporting this interpretation. The third section is the somatic interpretive section and contains the most clinically relevant data, such as the cancer type, whether the variant is diagnostic, prognostic, or predictive, the therapeutic context of the variant, and the effect of the variant within that therapeutic context. Finally, in the levels of supporting evidence subsection, we have incorporated the recommendations jointly published by the Association for Molecular Pathology, American Society of Clinical Oncology, and College of American Pathologists. Briefly, this is a four-tiered system to categorize somatic sequence variations based on their clinical significance. 
Tier 1 variants are those that have strong clinical significance as demonstrated by their inclusion in professional guidelines or FDA approval of therapies or well-powered clinical studies. Tier 2 variants are those with potential clinical significance where the variants have some clinical evidence in FDA-approved therapies or therapies included in professional guidelines for a different tumor type. Or there is evidence in investigative therapies or preclinical studies associated with those variants. Tier 3 contains variants of unknown significance and Tier 4 contains variants deemed benign or likely benign. The Somatic Cancer CDWG uses CIVIC as their data curation platform. CIVIC stands for Clinical Interpretation of Variants in Cancer and is an open access crowdsource curation platform as well as cancer variant knowledge base. The minimum variant level data framework that was described in the previous slides has been incorporated into the CIVIC curation platform for systematic curation of somatic variants in cancer. Here we outline the ClinGen somatic cancer curation process followed by our disease task forces and expert panels to curate cancer variants in CIVIC. As discussed before, we first prioritize genes and variants commonly altered in, can in the cancer type of interest. We then perform a systematic scientific literature search to identify and shortlist appropriate papers that contain information about the gene and variant of interest as well as some supporting clinical or preclinical evidence within the context of a disease for further curation. Based on the cancer genomic information and its clinical significance in each scientific paper, we then curate an evidence item in CIVIC. For example, we can search for scientific papers that contain clinical, preclinical, or some sort of functional evidence demonstrating that the exon 21 L858R amino acid substitution in the EGFR gene supports sensitivity or response to the drug erlotinib in non-small cell lung cancer, and then curate multiple evidence items from these publications in CIVIC to capture this information. After curating evidence items about a particular gene and variant within the context of a disease, we can summarize all this evidence into a variant assertion in CIVIC. Variant assertions are classified using the AMP ASCO CAP guidelines that were described before. For example, we can summarize all the evidence items curated in CIVIC on the EGFR L858R variant that predicts response to erlotinib in non small cell lung cancer into a variant assertion and assign it an AMP Tier 1 Level A evidence since this information is included in the FDA drug approval for erlotinib as well as in the NCCN guidelines for non-small cell lung cancer. Once an evidence item is curated and submitted in CIVIC, the evidence ID shows up in orange color, which indicates that the evidence item is in the submitted or the pending state. The ClinGen CIVIC editors will then review this evidence item, and if your interpretation is correct and in compliance with our standard curation procedures, it is approved. The approved evidence item is indicated in green color. If the data curation is not in compliance with our curation procedures, then the editor will reject the evidence item, which is indicated in red. These evidence items and assertions are finally reviewed and approved by the ClinGen Somatic Expert Panel members, after which they are converted and submitted to the ClinBar database. In the next few slides, we will discuss the different components of an evidence item and how to curate this in CIVIC. The schematic shows a layout of how evidence is curated in CIVIC. While curating an evidence item, you will assign a level of evidence to the study, which ranges from levels A to E. Level A is the highest level of evidence and is used when the data from a particular clinical study was used for drug approval by the FDA or oncology professional societies. Levels B to D are commonly used while curating an evidence item in CIVIC. Level B evidence comes from a clinical study, either a phase one, two, or three clinical trial, or a clinical study with a large number of patients and statistically significant data. Level C evidence is curated from a case study, including one or a small number of patients with no st statistical analysis conducted. Level D evidence is curated from preclinical work, 
conducted in cells, xenografts, animal models, or other types of laboratory results. Finally, level E evidence provides inferential support for the described variant and can be derived from in silico predictions, cell lines, animal models, or human studies. This could mean that the variant was not ever actually measured or that the results from the study do not directly evaluate the claims made by the evidence item. Examples of all these evidence types are available in the civic health document. After assigning the appropriate level of evidence, we then choose the somatic variant type as predictive, diagnostic, or prognostic. Predictive variants typically have some therapeutic evidence associated with drug response or resistance. Diagnostic variants are helpful in diagnosing cancer subtypes, and prognostic variants help determine whether the patient with that particular variant does better or worse irrespective of the cancer treatment. Finally, we determine if the particular variant supports or does not support a particular clinical outcome. For example, the T790M variant in, EGFR, in the EGFR gene would be curated as supports resistance to the drug erlotinib in non-small cell lung cancer. In another example, if a colorectal cancer patient has a KRAS mutation, then they would not respond to EGFR monoclonal antibody inhibition. Such evidence would be annotated as does not support resistance in CIVIC. It is important to note that an evidence item is always written within the context of a specific disease. Now we will see an example of how to curate a predictive evidence item in CIVIC from the Anderson et al. paper as narrated by a ClinGen CIVIC editor. So let's say you've identified a paper that you want to enter into CIVIC. In this case, I'm going to use Anderson et al., published in Blood in 2017, shown here. In this paper, they discuss that Ventaclax achieves um, responses in 79% of patients with relapsed or refractory chronic, chronic lymphocytic leukemia or small lymphocytic lymphoma. However, they want to understand why patients that do progress, progress. And so they want to test a number of risk factors for progression and see if there are any um, associations. In Table 3, they'll show several of the different um, factors that they tested. And in this table, you'll see that deletion 17P and or P53 mutations were also tested. We've got 24 patients with mutation and 16 without. But there was no significant correlation between the time to progression and um, the mutation status. Finally, I'd like you to note that TP53 mutation is going to be our variant. More specific uh, amino acid changes were not provided, so we're going to stick with what we call a bucket variant and use P53 mutation. Now that we've identified our paper, we can go to the CIVIC website. So civicdb.org will take you to the home page. I'm going to notice that there's only three buttons because you can't add or edit evidence in CIVIC until you've signed in. So once you've signed in with one of our authorized providers, you can now see that there are four buttons and we can add evidence. As I mentioned, we're talking about TP53 mutations. So we simply type TP53 and a series of options appears. And now we can type mutation and use one from the dropdown or create our own. We have the specific PubMed ID and you'll notice that underneath the citation, is it's updating with the various numbers. So that we actually found that Anderson et al. 27 in blood is the appropriate PubMed ID. We can then enter our variant origin and the disease. And the disease ontology ID appears. So this is important because we want to make sure that we map the most specific um, disease as, as we can. We can then enter our evidence statement, which I have pre-populated here. And we can edit it um, as it's shown here. Since our evidence statement involves a drug, we're going to choose the evidence type predictive. We'll see that this is associated with therapeutic response. The evidence level is clinical evidence, since it's part of a clinical study and a number of patients. And the evidence direction is does not support because there was no significant association between the tested parameters. This does not support resistance or response, which was the expected outcome. And here we can put um, the drug name or drug names if there's more than one, but in this case there's only a single drug. 
associated phenotypes aren't really appropriate at this point, but we do want to put a trust rating. And I'm only going to put two stars here because it was rather small numbers and it's more difficult to prove a negative than a positive. Finally, I'd add some additional comments as to why I believe that um, this should be a two star rating and that this is an appropriate um, evidence item. So I can enter that and then I can click Submit. Now I simply click View it here. It redirects me back to where my provisional evidence statement is shown. Evidence that's in a pending state is shown in orange, while accepted evidence is shown in green. And now you can see that this is my evidence statement and all the structured fields can be viewed here, and that it was submitted by me less than a minute ago. As I mentioned before, Civic is also a cancer variant knowledge base where users may search for curated variant interpretations by going into civicdb.org. Here in the text box, I will search for the gene EGFR and select one of the options from the drop-down box. This will take us to the EGFR gene page, where you can see a short curated summary of the gene and its role in cancer on the left. On the right, you will see further details about this gene provided by the mygene.info service. Below you will see a list of all of the EGFR variants or variant groups curated in Civic. Here you can filter by the variant of interest and I'll look for the T790M variant. Clicking on the variant will take me to the variant summary page. Here on the left, you will see a curated summary of the variant and its role in cancer. On the right, you will see additional curated information about the representative variant coordinates, as well as additional annotations from the myvariant.info service. If you scroll further down, you can find all of the evidence items for the T790M variant curated in Civic. As you can see, there's 41 total evidence items curated. You can also download all of this data in CSV format. Clicking on an evidence item will take you to a detailed evidence summary that has been curated in Civic. You can find all our ClinGen somatic and civic variant curation and interpretation training resources on the ClinGen website under the Curation Activities tab by going to the Somatic Variant Training Materials. Clicking on the Training Materials link will take you to the list of video tutorials on how to get started in Civic, how to curate and edit an evidence item, how to add source suggestions, and also the publications for the Minimum Variant Level Data Framework and the Civic Standard Curation Protocol. You can also get to the Civic database directly from this web page by clicking on the Sign In or Sign Up button. In Civic, ClinGen and its Somatic Disease Task Forces are set up as separate organizations so that one can easily access the curated data entered by each of these task forces. Here you can see a summary of the Somatic Cancer CDWG's curation activities in Civic. The Somatic Pediatric, Hematological, and Genital Urinary Cancer Task Forces have collectively curated 459 evidence items in Civic for about 150 variants. Relevant evidence items have been summarized to create 16 somatic variant assertions. To date, about 85 members from the Somatic CDWG have contributed to curation activities and variant interpretation in Civic. And we are also accepting volunteer curators to join our group. To join any of ClinGen's ongoing curation activities, please take our volunteer survey available on our website at clinicalgenome.org. Thank you.